Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in Dhyan or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your breath. Normal, spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. I am breathing in, I am breathing out. And I am aware I am breathing in, I am aware I am breathing out. Let this be the form of your awareness for some time. Now shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, Brumadhyaya. And at the Brumadhyaya, visualize the form of your Guru or your Ishtadevata or a brightly burning Jyoti, the symbol of the Guru Tattva, symbol of knowledge. Visualize this experience and maintaining your connection with this experience, we shall chant the mantra Om three times together followed by the Shanti mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Om. Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahavir Yankaravahai Tejas Vina Vadita Mastu Ma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Hari Om Tatsat Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then gently move your palms away. Open your eyes. Aryom, Ratsat, Namonarayan, Jai Ho. A very, very warm welcome to all the participants of this Swagatam 2023. Swagatam 2023 is a very important moment in our time. Every moment is, of course, very important. But sometimes, there are some moments which have the ability to be a game changer. When we are watching a game of cricket, every wicket which is taken or every run which is scored is very crucial. But while chasing, sometimes there is a specific wicket which, when taken, the entire 
outlook of the game changes and after there either things go downhill or they go uphill ha huh. it does not mean that we have won the game no but it means that there is a moment after which something which was not possible suddenly becomes possible and this is the moment in time which is very crucial and we are on the cusp of such a moment in time if you look at ourselves all throughout we are in very exciting times some people might feel that oh my god there is so much of difficulty there is so much of stress there is so much of pain there is so much of all negativities yes there is because there will be negativities there will be problems but here is a moment in time when we can make a change and a change within ourselves around ourselves and beyond ourselves because we must remember that we do not exist in isolation there is a misconception in the modern society that we alone can make a change or i am the master of my life now i am an adult i will take my own decisions but who is i who takes this decisions are not my decisions influenced greatly by the way my peers think or the various advertising holdings that i observe or the things that i look at so if i am influenced by all of this how can it be my decision do we even know what it means to be my decision do we even know what i actually want you see <clears throat> if the child is down with fever and cold and cough and the child keeps on demanding please give me ice cream please give me ice cream please give me ice cream what would you as a parent do all of you have been through this experience what would you do tell me no ice cream hmm? no ice cream <laughs> I'll tell them it's so, not good it's not good for you it's not good for me i'm come on ice cream is so nice i like it so much um, it gives me so much of joy after all joy and happiness is all what is their life so if something is giving me joy and you are saying no no ice cream how is that good if you don't take it now in the future you will have a better joy ah that's the important point at this point of time you are suffering with fever and cold if you take ice cream just now that cold exacerbated get aggravated that is the reason why you are not given ice cream at this point of time once you get better then of course go ahead and have as much ice cream as you want so how can i come to know about this when we grow up i don't know if we really grow up or we just keep making the same mistakes again and again because growing up is an active process the body growing is a passive process it will happen with or without you but growing here is a very active 
and conscious process. And <clears throat> this is something which we need to bring in our mind. When to take an ice cream, when not to take an ice cream. When you have the operation of, after you get an operation of tonsils, then they say you should have an ice cream. After you get a tooth extracted, they say you should have an ice cream. Doesn't it sound funny? But why? Because the cold will constrict the vessels and reduce the inflammation. And here, the cold is going to aggravate because already they are inflamed and it's going to come up. So we need to be able to discriminate what is good and what is not good. When is it good? When is it not good? The same thing can be good and the same thing can be bad. It's just a matter of timing. So this is what is important. And today, we are at the cusp of such a moment in time. We are on the brink of the new year. At some places, the new year is just be beginning. In other places, we will be entering into the new year. Nevertheless, we are at an important cusp. It's a different matter that this new year appears to be a little bit ironical. Because when we watch in nature, when is a new beginning? How is a new beginning? The new beginning is full of life, full of energy. Look at nature. When the new bird comes in or new leaves come up, look at the tree. You know, they are, it, it is more, it is full of vitality. Look at nature just now. It is frozen. It is hard. It is dying. So, can actually winter be the beginning of a new year? It appears not. And actually, if you look at our months, September, Sub septa nombre, 7, October, octo, 8, November, none, 9, December, teka, 10. Oh, the year is supposed to have 12 months. So how is it that after deca, it got over? This, according to nature, is not the new year. The new year starts in spring. Nevertheless, this is still an important moment. Why? Because when the collective conscious does something, there is great strength which comes in it. And we always want an excuse to celebrate, to enjoy. And same thing, we as yoga participants always are on the lookout for an excuse to be able to reorient ourselves, realign ourselves and walk further. Because in yoga, that is the only thing. Self-improvement and self-introspection. Introspection. Self-observation. Self These two things are most important. Atma Nirikshan, Atma Parikshan. And then you have to keep on improving and fine-tuning yourself. So this is a beautiful occasion. And what does the new year suggest? It's the moment of new beginnings. And it is traditionally the time when we take new sankalpas, new resolves. I will do A, B, C, D, E. And we all know where these resolves end in. Because these resolves are taken on the spur of the moment. These resolves are not backed by facts. These resolves are not backed by the ground realities. These resolves perhaps do not reflect 
the direction we want to take. And that is the reason why as a yoga practitioner, we have to have a separate approach. First, for the last three days, we tried to have a period of reflection to observe what is it that I did? What is it that I didn't? What is it that I should have done? What are my capabilities? What were my learnings? What were my failures? Where did I go wrong? Aha! When I go wrong, that's the most important moment. Why? Because that is where you will know, okay, this is something which I should not have done. Then <coughs> we need to know how not to do it. Then we need to know what to do and how to do. And then we have to start doing it. So last three days, we have tried to observe ourselves. Life is a journey. And in this journey, we are at different milestones in our lives. So every person's individual journey, milestones will be different. What is good for me will not be good for somebody else, will not be good for the third person. However, there are basic principles. And we have looked at these principles. First, observe what our strengths are. Then, what our weaknesses are. But why do we have strengths and weaknesses? Is there a purpose? Is there any need? Yes, we have certain needs. If I don't eat, my body is going to be weak. If I don't wear clothes, I am going to feel cold. If it is raining and I don't take an umbrella, well, I am going to get wet and going to get sick. So, there are needs like these. And more than that, there are desires. There are ambitions. There are hopes. There are aspirations. And that is very important because that is the sign of life. Aspiring, desiring is not un-yogic. How to approach it? That is the yogic approach. Like the example we had spoken of earlier, when should I take an ice cream and when should I not? That we need to understand. And that is what is known as Viveka. Once the discrimination comes in, then we know what to do and what not to do. Then comes willpower. Then with the willpower, we can do what we want to do and we can stay away from what we don't want to do. There is a problem here. I know what to do. I know how to do also. But my mind doesn't allow me to do. Does this happen to any of you sometime or am I just talking some theory? It happens all the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah. No matter if I am 5 years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. That is the problem. And this was best depicted <clears throat> By that conversation between Krishna and Duryodhan, not Arjun. Duryodhan tells him, Janami dharmam, nachame pravrutti. Janami adharmam, nachame nivrutti. What does it mean? I know that this is what is dharma, what should be done. But my mind does not go there. I, I, it doesn't allow me to do it. I know this is inappropriate. But my mind does not move out from there. What can I do? 
that person which is sitting inside me is compelling me. This is exactly what Arjun had asked in the Bhagavad Gita. Atha kena prayuktoyam papam charit purushaha anichanna pivarshneya baladiva niyojit. Atha kena prayuktoyam. What is that which forces one to go in a specific direction even if you do not want to? The addict who is addicted to cocaine or any addiction knows fully well he has tried umpteen number of times. But he cannot succeed. Why can he not succeed? The Lord has replied, Kama Esha, Krodha Esha, Rajoguna Samud. These are the two things which destroy the Clarity of vision. Kama and Krodha. These are the two representatives. Your desires, they cloud your intellect. So what to do? Do we get rid of the desires altogether? No. You cannot and you should not. Because desires are those things which propel you. Point is, <coughs> we need to channelize them. When we channelize them, then we get the results which we need. How to channelize? That is the crucial part. Everything boils down to the quality of our mind. When the quality of the mind is strong, then even the biggest challenge is easy and it becomes joy and adventure. Oh, I, have, I go up Mount Everest and come back and I feel so proud and great and happy about it. And if my mind is weak, Oh, so cold, I, I can't get up, it's walking so hard, there's no good food. We keep on cribbing. The experience is the same. You are going up the mountain. But in one, that challenge becomes a source of joy. And in another, that challenge becomes a source of sorrow, a problem of collapsing. Why does that happen? That happens because the quality of mind is weak. Once we know what the quality of mind is, then we need to nourish, nurture, strengthen the mind. We should not fight with the mind. We have to nourish it. Our mind is not our enemy. All we have to do is, we have to befriend it. And once we befriend it, it can do everything what we want. Because it knows how to drive the car. If I get a person who has no idea of how to drive a car, to sit down and drive a car. He's just going to go nuts. He's not going to be able to deliver. But why is it that I have to get such a bumpkin who doesn't know anything? Because the driver who knows everything does not listen to me. I tell him go left, he goes right. So I cannot force the driver. I need to befriend the driver. The mind is the driver of this body. And we need to befriend that mind. Then, when we befriend that mind, then our desires start getting fulfilled. We start coming to know how to make those desires come true. We come to know the tricks of the trade. And then we also know which desire to pursue and which desire not to pursue. If you pursue a specific desire, then you know that you are going to land in a problem. So you know you have to 
desist from that desire. Again, next aspect is how to desist. That is where yoga comes in. Two most important things. Vairagya, Viveka and then Dhyasa. Three things. When we do these three things, then it becomes possible to make that breakthrough in our life. We have our hopes and aspirations. We have our ambitions. And yesterday we tried to become aware of our ambitions and our needs. Now today, in the new year, it is upon us to start analyzing which of our ambitions are taking us to the goal which we have set for ourselves. Which means we have to first decide what is my goal. The goal is final, ultimate. Then comes your objectives. Then come your targets. Then come your milestones. We need to set all of that. Your milestone is not your ultimate goal. Ultimate goal can be something different. But to achieve that ultimate goal, you need to go to a milestone. And you need to train yourself to make it happen. If we are climbing Mount Everest, we can't just walk up and uh, reach there. No, we need to train ourselves. We need to focus ourselves. And we need to push ourselves beyond our capacity. When we push ourselves beyond our capacity, then there is growth which takes place. Growth only takes place when there is <coughs> minuscule injury. When there is minuscule injury, then there is a repair regeneration which takes place. And for this repair and regeneration, we need proper nutrition. Nutrition of the body, nutrition of the mind, nutrition of the emotions. We need all of these. Yoga can provide this. And through these practices, we can come to know what is it that I want. And today, we have to try and observe our ambitions, our hopes, our desires, our fantasies. And dwell upon them. What is it that I desire? After we dwell upon them, then we have to slowly come to a conclusion. What is it that I should desire? And when we know what I should desire, and then slowly we start orienting ourselves. Just like if I want to eat an ice cream later on, I need to desist from eating an ice cream now. In the same manner, if I want the sweet later on, I need to be prepared to desist from it now. This is what we need to observe. This is what we need to understand. And then when we do this, and with this, we start observing ourselves and aligning ourselves, aligning our strengths, our weaknesses, our ambitions, our needs, then there is harmony which starts developing. When the bird flies, it does not flap one hand up, one wing up and the other wing down. No, it flaps both wings up and both wings down in cohesion, in synchronicity. That is important. And when I want to turn right, I will move one less and one more and then the other way around. Why? Because there is coherence. There is a direction which is there. In the same way, if we want to take the swan, become the swan and take that graceful flight of the swan, then we need to learn to have that harmony. 
coherence, balance within ourselves. Our strengths, our weaknesses, our ambitions, our needs. And when we do that, then we know that is the mountain top I have to reach and I will move in that direction. So today, we will practice the third step, trying to become aware and to sift through what I want and what I don't want. Today we will focus on the ambitions, hopes, desires, fantasies and the purpose of life. They say yoga is a practical science and Swami Shivanandji always used to say an ounce of practice is worth much more than a ton of theory. So enough of theory. And let us do a short practice, allowing us to connect to this energy, to guide us in this direction. Please sit comfortably, if possible, in a meditative posture. Hands on your knees in Dhyan or Chin Mudra. The head, neck, shoulders, back. All in a straight line, eyes and mouth gently closed. Observe your body from the top of your head to your toe. Let there be no tension, no tightness. Let there be no discomfort. I shall enumerate the different body parts to you and you become aware of this body part. And if there is any tension, let it flow away. After this, let that body part become stationary and still, steady like a stone. Become aware of your right hand thumb, second finger, third, fourth, fifth, all five fingers together, palm, back of the palm, wrist, elbow, shoulder, Armpit, upper back, lower back, hip, thigh, kneecap, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole, right big toe, second, third, fourth, and the fifth. Become aware of the entire right side of the body. All the excessive tension is dissolving away. And <clears throat> this is becoming steady, still, like a stone. Come to the left side. Left hand thumb, second finger, third, fourth, fifth, all five fingers together, palm, back of the palm, wrist, elbow, shoulder, armpit. Upper back, lower back, hip, thigh, kneecap, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole, left big toe, second, third, fourth, fifth, the whole left side of the body. The left side of the body is also becoming completely relaxed, stationary, and still. Bring your awareness to the top of your head, the crown of the head, 
forehead, right eyebrow, left eyebrow, the eyebrow center, right eye, left eye, right ear, left ear, right cheek, left cheek, right nostril, left nostril, upper lip, lower lip, chin, throat, neck, the right shoulder blade, left shoulder blade, the chest and the back, the abdomen and the lower back, the entire torso, both the arms, both the legs, the whole body. The whole body is now becoming stationary, still, relaxed. It is as if your body has frozen. Even if you wish to, you are unable to move your body. Observe the steadiness in the body. In this stationary and steady body, we receive, we keep receiving information from the external world through the five senses. Become aware of the five senses, the sense of touch, taste, smell, hearing and vision. Information is brought in, is processed, and decisions are made accordingly. Become aware of the touch sensation. Shift your awareness to the taste. to the smell, to the different sounds, to the forms and shapes coming up in front of the closed eyes. And in this dark space in front of the closed eyes, now quickly let your mind go to the entire last year and observe the events, observe your strengths, your weaknesses, your ambitions, your needs. <coughs> Spend some time on each of them. Observe the natural tendency to judge ourselves and desist from that. And now, allow your mind to dwell upon your hopes, your aspirations, your desires, your fantasies, 
your wants. Let your mind free, give it a free run and relive in your mind the different hopes, aspirations, fantasies you have. Visualize the activity creating and manifesting the flow, the sequence of events. Allow the mind to run free for some time and explore the different fantasies, hopes, aspirations, desires we have. Suspend all forms of judgment. Just let go and explore. Now, slowly add another component. What is it that you want in life? What is it that you will achieve by getting what you have desired for? Will it provide you that which you want ultimately? Ponder upon it and choose those desires, those hopes, those aspirations, those ambitions which are in alignment with your goal but are not out of alignment of your needs. Establish this harmony between your needs and ambitions and the goal you set for yourself. Bring your awareness to your body, the posture, the muscular tone, the breath, and then go back to the process of harmonizing the goal, the ambitions, and the needs. This is an ongoing process, not something which can be completed so shortly. So therefore, just learn to begin. And this is something which you should carry on during the day so that we can come to our conclusion by evening. What is the goal, the ultimate aim I would like to achieve in this life. <laughs> and to do that, what are the objectives I will need to obtain? To do that, what are the milestones I will need to reach? Take 
pick up this harmonized connection between your goal your ambitions your needs and the timeline the objectives the deadlines and the goal visualize expolate project a hope a desire an ambition and observe does it take you to that intended direction and goal if not what can it be used for slowly release the thoughts of your strengths your weaknesses your ambitions your needs just the thought of your goal your objectives your milestones and now bring your awareness to your breath i am breathing in and breathing out we shall bolster our body our mind our entire systems so that it gains the strength and the ability to reach this goal awareness on your breath those of you who know how to should start with jai breath constrict your throat just a bit and breathe in and breathe out awareness in the throat and awareness of the air hitting the throat as it goes down and hitting the throat as it comes up there is a very soft purring sound which comes observe this become aware of the frontal psychic passage from the navel to the heart to the throat from manipur anahat vishuddhi and as we breathe in visualize a thin tube extending from your navel to the throat and when you breathe in this tube fills up from the navel to the heart to the throat and when you breathe out it empties from the throat to the heart to the navel manipur anahat vishuddhi vishuddhi anahat manipur manipur anahat vishuddhi vishuddhi anahat manipur keep on breathing in ujjayi with the awareness and the visualization that this tube is filling up and emptying with every breath the breath moves up from manipur anahat vishuddhi in inspiration and goes down from vishuddhi anahat manipur in expiration मणिपुर अनाहत विशुद्धि विशुद्धि अनाहत मणिपुर मणिपुर अनाहत 
विशुद्धि विशुद्धि अनाहत मणिपुर मणिपुर अनाहत विशुद्धि विशुद्धि अनाहत मणिपुर कंटिन्यू रीडिंग अप एंड डाउन द फ्रंटल साइकिक मैसेज and become aware that as you are breathing up and down and up and down and up and down in this area there is a subtle energy which is being generated over here a tremendous energy is manifesting becoming a column of energy high energy visualize that this tube is dissolving and this energy is now diffusing all throughout the body the mind the emotions the senses all aspects of our being our psyche <clears throat> and feel the energy reaching into every pore of our being as we breathe in experience this energy increases heals nourishes nurtures rejuvenates every aspect of our being and as we breathe out all the tiredness negativity gets dissolved in our breath and moves out of the body breathing in great energy comes in distributes dissolves all the negativities and as you breathe out it leaves the body visualize this for some time then observe that this energy is allowing us to have improved communication improved abilities allowing us to become a better i and now that makes my goal my aim within grasp i have been able to increase my abilities to achieve my goal slowly bring back this energy from the entire being let it come to this column it comes to vishuddhi all the energy comes to vishuddhi travels from vishuddhi to anahat to manipur <coughs> and from manipur it dissolves and goes away disappears into the subtle dimensions release ujjayi breathe normally and become aware that this subtle energy has strengthened our bodies our mind our emotions and our psyche we are able to think better perceive better prognosticate better understand better discriminate better execute better 
visualize the manifestation of the aim you had chosen and observe that my ambitions are synchronizing themselves with this aim. My needs are adjusting to this aim. I am developing and strengthening my different strengths and abilities. My weaknesses are being converted into opportunities for further strengthening. There is a complete all-round cohesion taking place. Feel the energy guiding you and observe that this energy is coming from your eyebrow center. From that image you had chosen in the beginning. Your mind is being drawn to this image at the eyebrow center. Feel the grace, the love, the hope, the beauty showering upon us. Maintaining your awareness on this experience, <clears throat> slowly externalize your awareness, become aware of your body, the posture, the tone, the pain in the joints. Become aware of the external sounds coming to you from within the room. External sounds coming to you from far away. Keeping your eyes closed, slowly wiggle your fingers and toes. Roll the neck gently from side to side. Keeping your eyes closed, give your body a good stretch. Raise the hands above the head. Give your body a very good stretch. Bring the hands back on your knees, Nyan or Chen Mudra. Awareness again, the eyebrow center. And connecting to that experience you had chosen in the beginning of the session, we shall chant the mantra Om three times, followed by Shanti Pa, taking a deep breath in. Oh. 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 Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Mrutyorma Mrutam Gamaya Sarvesham Swasti Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Om Trambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam 
ಉರ್ವಾರುಕಮಿವ ಬಂಧನ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮುಕ್ಷೀಯಮೃತ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಮುದ್ರ ತ್ವಮೇವ ಮಾತಾ ಚ ಪಿತಾತ್ವಮೇವ ತ್ವಮೇವ ಬಂಧುಶ್ಚ ಸಖಾತ್ವಮೇವ ತ್ವಮೇವ ವೇದ್ಯಾ ದ್ರವಿಣ ತ್ವಮೇವ ತ್ವಮೇವ ಸರ್ವ ಮಮ ದೇವ ದೇವ ತ್ವಮೇವ ಸರ್ವ ಮಮ ದೇವ ದೇವ ತ್ವಮೇವ ಸರ್ವ ಮಮ ದೇವ ದೇವ ಹರಿ ಹಿ ಓ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಜಂಟ್ಲಿ ರಬ್ಯ ಹಾಂ ಪಾಂ ಸಗೇನ್ಸ್ ಟೀಚ್ ಅದರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ದ ಪಾಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಐಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ದ ವಾಮ್ ರೇಡಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪಾಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯುವರ್ ಐಸ್ ಟು ದ ಬ್ರೇನ್ ಟು ದ ಹೋಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಜಂಟ್ಲಿ ಮೂವ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪಾಮ್ಸ್ ಅವೇ ಓಪನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಐಸ್ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಸತ್ ಸತ್ ನಮೋ ನಾರಾಯಣ 